Hello out there in YouTube land. I'm your host, Nord, and welcome to the Color Animal Inn. Tonight's a special tutorial episode. Uh, I'm going to show you how to use your Roll20 system to uh, bring a map into your game, a background map. Um, how to align it to the grid and make it look pretty for the players. Yeah, at least as pretty as the kind of map I'm going to be using is going to get. Uh, these maps aren't pretty, but they're darn effective. I like to go to a little place called Donjon. And here you can design all kinds of stuff. It's got all kinds of randomizers, but the one I particularly like is the Pathfinder Random Dungeon Generator. As you can see, you can come up with all kinds of different settings and like different styles even uh, of map that you can use. They're pretty cool. Sandstone kind of looks like the inside of a, a pyramid or something. And then there's like fire, <laughs> fire, fire, or even steampunk, whatever you want. I like to stand with the, the basic standard because, you know, the players aren't going to see most of the black. And a, a white base is just fine. You can set the size, the shape, uh, whether or not there's stairs, the room layout, all kinds of different things. And when you do, you can build a random. Uh, dungeon that's going to end up looking more like, more or less like this. This is the one that I've chosen to use tonight. Uh, randomly named the Lair of Gloomy Necromancy. Ooh, spooky. And as you can see, when all is said and done, the thing will randomly design you uh, a big old collection of rooms. Little corridors, I told it to add some uh, pathways to the outside, like here and here. Uh, one obvious one here. And then there's uh, these various dead end corridors. Uh, I told it no stairs because I didn't want to deal with stairs. That's more or less what you need here. It's enough to to have some basis for some imaginative kind of role playing. And then the, the thing will tell you all these different descriptions mostly uh, about like what the doors look like some room features monsters if any uh, I tend to ignore the monsters that they put up here uh, the treasure can or cannot you know be fun it, it depends I, like, I just like to have a, a map as a base for a good random adventure this is an easy way to to build a map without having to get too much into it so once you have this um, the easiest way, of course, is to just right-click, save the image as, and then import that into your Roll20. But when you do that, you end up with a map that's got all these numbers and everything's on it. Um, so your players are going to see that, and they're going to see these numbers, and they might even see, like, where is it? Like, down here, there's a secret door. Um, in this room here, all the ways into it, all four doors are secret. So if they see a glimpse of this room here, they're going to know there's a secret door there somewhere. So you're going to want to hide that. And Don John gives you a great way to do that. And it's player's map here. You can download it without the numbers and you end up with just uh, a map that just shows the obvious rooms and corridors and such. And that's what I've done uh, ahead of time here. Uh, it downloads it into your hard drive. From there, you can come up to the art library here. Uh, click on this little star, opens up your library. And with all your various things you, you've uploaded, you can click on upload here and just drag it or choose the file you want. And when you do, it's in your library. And from there, if you put a tag on it, you can uh, search it later. So I've got here two different copies of this, and this one here, the GM, and this one here, the player. The player is the one that I want. And I happen to know that this one here is the player, that's the GM. So they're already here once I do a search for the lair. Everything, little stars, puts in my library, some other stuff that I don't know why this comes up when you put layer, but that's what it does. So you're going to come up here to the page toolbar. I'm going to create a new page. 
and I'm going to drag it over here so it's a little easier to get to. Comes up as untitled, so you want to go ahead and give it a title. Let's see. Layer of Gloomy Necromancy. You hit enter, otherwise it won't save. And now you've got a, a page up. You know, switch over there and you can see that that's all it is. It's just a little blank piece of paper with some grid lines on it. That's all you need. Map and background layer there. So you go up here and under the uh, page settings I happen to know this map when all is said and done is going to be pretty big. I'm going to want a width of 80 squares and a length of 85 squares to get the result that I want. So I just happen to know that from previous experience. Um, if you're not sure, you can always just count or the, the program that you're using might tell you. If all else fails, you can. there are other ways to figure it out. But this is what I need for what I'm doing. I'm going to set the background to green because I kind of like a, a neon green, a dark green, like a grass green. Uh, set my diagonals to Pathfinder because that's what I'm going to be playing. And I'm going to change the grid lines to red. You'll see why here in a minute. Make them nice and sharp. Easy to see. I'm not going to want the fog of war on this because I have the ability to use dynamic lighting, which is a lot of fun. I'm not going to be using that now, but in the future. And that's all you need. You can set it up to play music, but I don't want any music. So, okay, saved it, and there we go. Now I've got a really, really, really big map. You see how small the grid lines are there. So I'm going to take my map, and I'm going to drag it, make sure I'm on the map layer, onto the map page. And the first thing I'm going to do is right click, go to advanced, go to set dimensions. So how big do I want? Well that's going to be based on the dimensions of the map that you use. I like to use GIMP here to kind of do my different things. And open the layer of gloomy necromancy here. And there you can see right there it's 3851 by 3751 pixels. That's what I want. At 2851. 2851. By 3751, I think it was. There you go. It's not bad. It's at least the right proportions. Let me go ahead and just double check that. Yep, 2851, 3751. Perfect. Alright. So let's here zoom way in. And you can see that even though I tried, the the grids just do not line up. They're they're not proportional. So what you're gonna do here, you just let it snap to wherever it wants to be. The little gray lines here that you can barely see, those are the, the ones on the map itself, whereas the red lines are the red lines on uh, the grid lines on World 20. And I want them to match. So I'm going to right click on my map, go to Advanced, and this time I'm going to go to Align to Grid. And this tool is going to give you a 3x3 three three grid, or ask you to give it a 3x3 three three grid. And in this case, it wants your um, original maps 3x3 three three grid. So I'm working with the gray here. Gonna line it up to the corner here. Go down one, two, three, and it looks to match up right about there. And this is kind of hard to see. It looks like it's right on where the red line is. So more or less there is what I want. That looks perfect. So let's see what happens. All right, that's close. Um, Again, I, I've used these maps before, and I happen to know that 49 is not 
quite what I want. I actually want 50 by 50. And when I do that, it's going to stretch the thing even more. And now you can see how the grid's all beautifully lined up. It's all just perfectly right. If you don't get it right the first time, you can go back, you can make some real small adjustments and try it again. But it's best if you have uh, some sources that you can go to to tell you exactly how big the picture is and how big all the, the grids are. So once you do that, you're going to line it up so the whole map is on screen. And I like having some room around the edge here. Uh, since when the players come to a new map, their view is limited to the upper left corner here. I like giving us give us some room on the left side. Bring it down about five, and then a bunch of room on the side, and they will be able to put their characters, their tokens around. Make sure there's a little room on all sides. So that's the basic gist of it. When you do this, uh, you get your map placed and everybody can see everything on it. But in this case, I want to add a little information. I want some, some stuff from me, right? So I'm going to go to the GM info overlay and on Donjon here, when you roll up your map, the player's map takes all this stuff off, but you can just save the map by right clicking save the image as and that'll be your DM map. Now once you do that, if you run it through your GIMP and you erase all the white, what you end up with is a transparent map uh, that will show all the numbers but only on the GM layer. To wit, this here on the GM layer, I'm going to grab it and stretch it and it's the same map, so all I have to do is stretch it out to the right size. Stretch it. Where's that thing? Oh. There it is. Almost. I can do it. There we go. Stretch the whip out properly. Find the length. Stretch the height. And boom, right on top. So now I, as a GM, can see the GM layer and see all the different numbers here, little letters in the hallways to say where like hidden traps or things of interest might be. Whereas the players can only see the, the base map. So there's one more thing that you have to do here. Uh, and as you see, let's look between room 1 and 14 here. You see this wall. That's what the players see. But you as a GM should know that, oh, look at that. There's a, uh, a secret door there. Right? But it's not showing up here just because of the way the thing works. Uh, unfortunately, you can't really have the secret door there visible. But again, since we have the GM overlay, what you do is you take it and you drag it one square to the side, right? Now the secret door that's visible on the GM overlay has this solid wall, which is what the players see. And you can see the difference here. So you can go through and making sure you're on the GM layer, do a draw shape. And I like to take a, a nice bright red again because I want to make sure it's nice and visible. And wherever you see one of these secret doors, just put a little thing there on the GM layer. Like there's one here. And yeah, they're all over the place. Just kind of got to look for them. And I'm sure you people at home are like, oh, there's one, there's one. There's a lot of them. I'm not going to see them all the first try. So, yeah, there's a few. And then to make sure you got them all, bring it back to line up. You can see now there's like a little red square in the wall where a secret, you know, that means there's a secret door there. 
put them there some more. So gonna, this time go down one square. You'll see some others like here that I didn't see. So we're going to go ahead and put our little red square there. And let's see where else. Don't yell at me. I, I know you see it. I can't hear you. This is a recording. You're telling me there's one right there I don't see? It's not doing me any good. i got to find them on my own. Like there's one. There's one. And again, when you're done, just line it back up. And all your little secret doors have been revealed. Uh, for convenience, I tried this earlier. I'm going to bring us over to the page that I had. There we go. And this one has all the secret doors. I may still have missed one, but I think this is all of them. There's quite a few. Especially down to the south. Not so many up here to the north, it seems. So all together what you end up with is this is what you as the GM can see even when you're just on the objects and tokens layer. But your players will see it looking like Oh, no, nope, they won't see that. Well, they will because as a GM I didn't put them onto the right map. Page toolbar. Drag the player's ribbon over to the one that you want them to be on. Yeah, that's this one. All the secret doors are pretty marked. So, rejoin as a player. Uh, and players can't see anything. Fortunately, I happen to have a droppable torch I can use to make things visible. We'll zoom out here. There you go. There's the, the player map. You can see all the secret doors are still hidden. There's no room numbers, no nothing. They can see where there's a door and where there isn't. But they're going to still rely on the GM for everything else. Here, you see that little room all by itself. All the different secret doors around it. Can't see any of them. So that's the basics of how to align a map to a grid on Roll20 and uh, basically how to get your first map set up. So thanks for watching and uh, come back next time and we'll start working with the dynamic layer, dyna dynamic lighting layer, and see how that goes.